Some mornings, I wake with what a friend calls the wobblies. The wobblies arrive in a wave of worry and generally feeling unsure about the world and my place in it. And that's before you've even gotten out of bed. Some days, I don't want to go out there. You know, a lot of people, especially my students, talk about social anxiety, how being around others and in certain social settings leaves them feeling really uncomfortable. The world can be troublesome and exhausting. I am highly sensitive to that. And still, I know when we close ourselves off and hide out, it leaves us lonely, maybe fearful, disconnected, and often, weirdly, more anxious. So when was the last time you were on your way to class and you passed someone in the hall and said, hey, good morning? Or how about standing in line at the supermarket? Do you engage with the cashier or maybe the person in line behind you? Or is it all business? Get in, get out, phone on, head down, eyes averted feels like there's a collective social anxiety these days. Enter the Word Project. I did not call it the Word Project, nor did I think about social anxiety 20 plus years ago when I started making these very simple cards. I'd do some art on one side and write a word or words on the other. The words were always what I needed to hear. Relax, breathe, you're enough. And as a writer and a teacher, I started sharing these in yoga classes and writing workshops as a way for people to reflect, write, maybe share. And because everyone got to keep their card, I'd make more, and then more. And then one day it occurred to me, what would it be like to hand these out to random strangers and say, Target, the dentist office, a busy airport? So this is my intro. <laughs> Hi, I'm Betsy, and I'm a writer, and I'm kind of like Johnny Appleseed, except with words. And I make these cards, and they're all really positive. Would you like to pick one? Side note. <laughs> Anybody remember Johnny Appleseed? The guy with the pot on his head, bag of apple seeds, wandering around Pennsylvania and Ohio planting apple orchards? <laughs> My first, well, I had an unfortunate bias when I first started doing this, as biases are. I thought men wouldn't want to pick a card. For some reason, I was pretty sure they'd think too woo-woo, too warm and fuzzy, too no-thank-you word card woman. So my first man, if you will, was at the local price chopper. He was a young guy stacking red peppers in the produce section, and I came in, and we smiled and said good morning, and I said, try it. So I did my Johnny Appleseed thing, and he picked a card and thanked me and said, that is just what I needed. His word, courage. I say first man, first word, because every time we saw each other after that, he picked another card. And it was always kind of the same. He'd thank me, and then he'd take out his wallet and slide it in with all his other cards and put it in his back pocket. It's been many years since I've seen that young man, and I really wish I could remember his name. But I like to think that he is still walking around somewhere with a slender deck of cards in his wallet. As for the men thing, oh, I don't know how to go back. Clearly, I was wrong. Words are guides, simple reminders. I need them daily. So when you pick a card, it's a pause. It's a tap on the shoulder. It's a waking up in the present moment. 
as a nod to Johnny, it can be like planting a seed in your mind. A word can be a mantra, a mini mission statement. Let's say you pick the leap card and it suddenly hits you in the solar plexus that it's time to leave the lousy relationship. Send your work out for publication. Go back to school. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, do not be too timid and squeamish in your actions. All life is an experiment. The more experiments we make, the better. So what if we start with ourselves and make our own personal deck to keep on our desk or in our backpack? Maybe pick a word when we need one. Or families could make a family deck. Everyone could do some art and write some positive words and keep it in a bowl on the kitchen counter. Maybe on Sunday night, one person in the family could pick a word for everyone in the family to focus on for the week. Practice patience. Be kind. Dream. What if we had a beautiful bowl of words in our workplaces? Classrooms, cancer infusion centers, nursing homes, veteran centers. What if when someone went to the food pantry, they, they not only left with a box of pasta and a bag of rice, but with a gentle word too? If there was a word to describe the word project, I think it might be the Sanskrit word namaste, loosely translated the light in me bows to the light in you. I see you. Do you see me? Of course, there's so many other words to describe this. Fun, surprising, amazing conversations, connection. You know, I respect people's privacy and not everyone wants to engage. We don't need a word to connect with ourselves and others. But I can tell you after hundreds, maybe even thousands of words and all these years, I can count on one hand the number of people who've said no. Most everyone says yes. Oh dear. Things I don't need to know when I offer you a card, your politics, your religion, your sexual orientation, where you live, where you were born, all the things we layer over each other. Yeah. There's an Al Anon saying. It goes like this Just for today, I will be unafraid. Especially, I will not be afraid to enjoy what is beautiful and to believe that as I give to the world, so the world will give to me. So just for today and every day, especially when I wake with the wobblies, and trust me, I will, I'll offer you a smile, a good morning, and if we have the pleasure of meeting on campus, on a hiking trail, in the library, or maybe at a baseball game, I'll offer you a card and feel so grateful when you say yes. Namaste.